In this presentation, we're going to look at the critical path. So in this network, we have eight nodes and we have 11 activities, A, B, C, D, and so on. Each of those activities have a uh, their own duration. A takes eight time units, B takes four time units, and so on. Now, let's look at the nodes here. They are split up into three segments. So the circle is split up into three segments. On the left-hand side, we simply have the number of the node, number one, number two, and so on. On the right-hand side, we have, have it broken up into two parts. The top ha uh, part represents the earliest finish. That means the earliest we can be at that node with all of the required activities uh, that you need to be at had to be, you need to have completed to get to that node the earliest they are all completed so uh, in the first instance we have node 1 the earliest we can finish be finished there is simply time 0 oops let's try that again the earliest we can be finished there is time 0 okay now that's so far so good now a takes 8 time units so i'm going to put a little red 8 there and that means the earliest we can be uh, have everything uh, completed at node 2 is time 8. And that's because we have activity A completed. So that's an 8 for there. What about uh, node 3? Well, all we have to do for node 3 is ha make sure that activity B is completed. So the earliest we can have everything finished to be at node 3 is time equal 4. So I'm just going to put a little... F uh, four here just to sort of that'll become clear as to why I do that in a short while activity C takes three time units but to be uh, the earliest finish uh, for the earliest finish at uh, node four we have to have E completed as well E can only be completed once A is completed and E itself takes two time units so the earliest we can have E finished is time 10 so we have to make a choice here is it C with three time units, or is A and E with a 10. So it's actually, we picked the greater of the two numbers. So that's going to be 10. Okay. Uh, node 5, that's straightforward enough. We're going to do something similar there. Uh, this takes six time units, D, and that means uh, we can start at that time 4, and we'd be compl completed at time 10. So that's the earliest finish for node 5 is simply 10. Uh, let's look at node 6. This is where it uh, gets more interesting now. So H takes uh, 7 time units. So the earliest we can have uh, that completed is uh, at the 15th time unit. A, A, 8 for activity A and then another 7 for activity H. So that's 15 there. But what about uh, activity F? That would take 8 time units and we only start at the 10th time unit. So we have everything finished on that path at time equals 18. And what about activity 9? Well, that takes 9 time units, so that would be 19 there. So what's the greatest of these three numbers? It's 19. Okay. Now, uh, something similar for act, uh, node 7. So J takes uh, 2 time units, so that will be 21. And I takes uh, five time units, so that would have a, we would be there with at time could be have that activity I finish at time thirteen. So again, what is the greatest number greater of the two numbers there? That's twenty one. And there's only one uh, activity required to have everything completed. Now once we're at node seven, that is activity K that takes three time units. So the answer there is 24. Now, so I'm going to put in a little 24 there. So that is uh, the earliest finish for each of the nodes. Now, the latest finish for uh, node 8 is also going to be 24. So that uh, the for the last node, the earliest finish and the latest finish are should be the same. What we're going to do now is work back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up with a new page and what we're going to do is find out the latest finish for each of those nodes. And 
then we can determine the critical path from that. Now I've taken uh, some of the notation away just to make it easier to look at, just mindful of the fact it's on YouTube. So that's the only reason I got rid of some of the additional notation I put on there. Now, what we're going to do is work back. So we're going to do a very similar uh, approach. What we're going to do is work back uh, starting at time, the 24th time unit working back. So K takes three time units. So uh, the latest we can finish there is 21. And that's the only uh, one we have to consider. So in this case, it's going to be 21. Okay. Now, what is going, let's uh, look at the arrows that are pointing into arrow 7, what would be the latest finish uh, looking at true activity I and activity J. Well, first off, activity I, what's 21 minus 5, that is 16. Okay, so that I is, uh, takes 5 time units, and I'm subtracting 5 from 21 to get 16. What about J? That is uh, two time units, so the latest we can finish, have everything finished um, at node for node six is nineteen. That's twenty one minus the time unit for the time period, the duration for activity J. So it's twenty one minus two. That's nineteen. Now, so that is the only. Um, that's the only uh, activity that points back. It's 19. So we're going to put a 19 in there. Okay. We don't have everything finished for an act, uh, node 2 yet, so I'm not going to worry about that for a while. Now, let's lo let's go through, let's look at activity uh, node 5 here for a second. G takes 9 time units, so the latest finish we can have for there is 10. And again, that's the only one we have to consider, so that's 10 there. Uh, let's look at uh, node 4. Well, we have F that takes uh, 8 time units. So 19 minus 8, that would give us 11. And again, this is the only node we are, uh, uh, route we have to consider, or no, no, uh, activity we have to consider. It's the only one that points back. So that's going to be an 11 there. Let's look at node 3. And uh, that is uh, 10 minus the, uh, look from, from node 5, that is 10 minus 6, that's the uh, duration for activity D, that would give us 4 there. And again, that's the only one we have to consider, so that's a 4. Now, let's look at node 2. Let's look at uh, true, uh, from the point of view of activities H and activities E. We already have uh, from the point of view of activity I already. How long does H take? That takes uh, 7 time units, so 19 minus 7, that gives us 12. Uh, e, uh, from starting from node 4 and working back to node 2, true activity E, the latest finisher there is 11. And E takes two time units, so that's going to be nine. So we have, uh, in the, for the first time in this uh, network, we have, uh, for, uh, for the latest finish, what we have to do is figure out what we have to do, which one do we pick. We actually pick the lowest in this case, and it's going to be nine. Okay. So um, when we work back, what is the... The, the latest finish for A, or for uh, node 2, is 9. Now, so we're nearly finished there. All we have to do is look at node 1 and figure out what is the latest finish for node 1. So, uh, the latest finish for node 2 is 9. That means, from the point of view of activity A, which takes 8 time units, the latest finish there is 1. From uh, looking at uh, node 1 from the point of view of uh, node 4, true activity C, the latest finish will be, in that case, will be 8. And true activity B, 4 minus 4 is 0. And again, what we do is pick the lowest number there. So that's a 0. Okay. So it's towards the end we uh, 
uh, it gets a bit more interesting. Now, what is the critical path? The critical path is through the nodes where the earliest finish and the latest finish uh, uh, are the same. So uh, I'm just going to sort of uh, point it out here. It's uh, true. Well, it's tr uh, nodes one to three. There we go. I'm going to put in a. I'll take up that line actually. Make it pink. Magenta's ground. So there. So uh, nodes one to three to five to six. Up there and down there. Okay. So that is the critical path. And let's just write out the activities or the activities on the critical path. So it's B, D, G, J, and K. So that's the critical path. Uh, it's a long bit of work there, but it's pretty easy to get the hang of it. Anyway, that ends our presentation.